South Africa. Today, we're exploring the moments where Malima didn't just speak. He schooled, he outmaneuvered, and he made everyone watching feel his presence. If you're here to witness Malima at his intellectual peak, where his responses left everyone from interviewers to political rivals in AW, then stick around because we're not pulling any punches. Let's get straight into it. Let's start with one of Malima's most controversial moments, the firearm incident. The media tried to spin it, asking if he really fired that gun. Watch this as Malima, with Without breaking a sweat, dismantles the whole narrative. Well, and, and, but you, you also say that there's nothing wrong with what you did. Absolutely. Exactly. So the even in the firearm, there's nothing wrong that I did. That I can say. And so therefore, did you I will not be. Did you, so did you fire a the matter firearm? Is the matter is subjudicated. I will not but be. The truth let's, let's, hear, let's listen to this. I will not be pleading guilty. You won't be pleading no. guilty. So you didn't fire a firearm. I will not be pleading guilty. The matter is subjudicated. So you didn't fire a firearm. Instead of giving the interviewer a clear yes or no answer, Malema does something bold. He controls the narrative. He knows the law, and he refuses to be baited into incriminating himself, calling it a matter for the court. This isn't a man who lets others frame his words. He knows exactly when to push back and when to hold his ground. But I can't answer that question because the matter is before the court. I will answer it in but court. The thing is that the truth remains the same, no matter who asks no, it, and no matter where the truth is. But the, the once you are charged... I'm on, asking you, did you uh, fire the fire? No, no, but once you are charged, my man, you are now living under the guidance of your law, your legal representatives. And therefore, I'm not going to undermine that advice of my legal representatives so that tomorrow, when they fail to do their work, they don't accuse me of having messed up their case. He's sending a message not just to the interviewer, but to everyone watching. Malema doesn't play by their rules. He plays by his own. This is why so many young people look up to him. He stands firm, unbothered. This next clip is for every young African watching right now. In a continent where the youth feel pushed down, ignored, and frustrated, Malema's words here struck a chord like few others. The video is going viral on the continent because of your strong following yeah. on the continent. And perhaps to the youth on the continent who are looking up to you to give leadership in terms of how the youth on the continent should behave but also how they should uh, fight for uh, justice on the continent. What is your message after this video? The youth must take no nonsense from anyone. I do that. I don't take nonsense from anyone and I don't go around giving people nonsense. I don't, I don't provoke people. I don't do anything. You cannot bring nonsense to me, and I want me to accept it. The youth of Africa, it, it finds itself in this position because they've tolerated nonsense for a very long time. This is why people don't just follow Malema. They feel his words. He's saying, stand up, make your voice heard. Don't let anyone silence you. And just like that, he reminds us why he's so influential among Africa's youth. Now let's talk about another unforgettable moment, Malema's tribute to Robert Mugabe. Now, Mugabe is a divisive figure, but watch how Malema doesn't let anyone tell him who he should or shouldn't respect. Malema, um, will you and the AFF in charge be going to Zimbabwe to bury? Uh, Absolutely, we're going there. We're going to bury. President Robert Mugabe uh, is our leader, is our icon. Let's all uh, remember Mugabe the best way we know how. If he if he's a villain to you, don't impose that on us. Let's all remember him in different ways. What could be a hero to you may not be a hero to me. Wait until the clerk dies. The clerk is going to look better than Robert Mugabe, according to these people who tell us who to celebrate and who not to celebrate. I'm not the type. Nobel Peace Prize. Yeah, Nobel Peace Prize. The clerk, Nobel Peace, uh, 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 Nobel Peace uh, 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 Achiever, who presided over a regime that killed our people in the 90s. So I'm not going to be told by racist of note who to celebrate and who not to celebrate. Here, Malema is standing up not just for Mugabe, but for a principle, the right of Africans to define their own heroes. He makes a powerful point about Western hypocrisy, referencing F.W. de Klerk, who, despite his role in the apartheid regime, is celebrated by some as a peace achiever. Malema's message is clear. Don't tell us whom to celebrate. He's challenging the global narrative, reminding us that Africa doesn't need approval to honor its own. This moment hits hard because it's not just about one man. It's about reclaiming the dignity of a continent. Then, there there's his take on the Human Rights Commission. Malema's being investigated, and instead of defending himself, he takes it a step further. He flips the script. The, the Human Rights Commission, you say it's clearly taken a position. It's no longer 
a neutral body Absolutely. and you are not going to explain yourself before them. Why do you take that posture? Goli, you get information about me that this is the things I said. Mm. You ought to come to me and say, these are the allegations that are being made against you. What do you have to say? What do you do? You conclude and say, this is what you must do. Mm. And what must I say? You have already taken a decision about me. You can as well decide what you want to do with me. But I'm not going to apologize in 10 days. I'm not going to do it. Um, uh, they would rather take us to court. We have no problem going to court. Uh, and they will uh, argue our case in court. But that body must be ashamed of itself. Because the most basic principle of uh, uh, equality before the law mm. is such that you must hear both sides. That, that principle has been violated. This response exposes a system that Malema believes is biased and partial. He's making a larger statement here. Even institutions that claim to be neutral can be flawed. Malema's saying, if you want justice, start with fairness. Don't come to conclusions based on one side of the story. By questioning the commission, he's questioning every system that claims neutrality but shows bias. He's saying to every South African, you have a right to fairness, and if they won't give it to you, fight back. This is why Malema isn't just a politician. He's a symbol for people who feel they've been wronged. Next, we have the moment where Malema makes a bold claim that Praven Gordon has an offshore bank account in Canada. But when he's pressed about it, Malema doesn't flinch. He doubles down. That when it comes to Praveen Gordon, you say he's got a, a, a bank account in Canada. Yes. He doesn't. It shows that if, if, if he doesn't. He goes to court. Uh, the people who want to charge him, your Ntlemezas, your we can go on and on. The Cruen report into the rogue unit, uh, the judge there retracted and said this didn't happen. Why is it that you won't afford him that same latitude of he hasn't been found guilty. You, must, you, you, you are not even allowed to say he doesn't have an account. You can't say that. You, yeah, you can't say. You, you confirmed. You, uh, and Nalo and I, we must agree. You can't say that you because... you can't throw things. You must back it up. I'm not throwing it up. Where's I've, the backup? I've, I've given the police the account number. But they checked I've, it I've, and they found it doesn't exist. Which police? It was, it, it was uh, reported. Uh, you are relying on Adrian Basson. It's not the police. But Adrian Basson uh, is an investigative uh, report. Uh, uh, he's nothing. He's uh, police. The authorities in Canada were phoned, Mr. Malema. Uh, you can't make stuff Adrian up. Leave Adrian Basson. The hawks, they are hawks. I've gone to the police station. They, you must give it yeah, to me. Yeah, but you go there with files. We don't know what's in there. It could but just you, be a, a love novels. Uh, you can't like take that. love letters to the police. You it's could, not a place for love. Because you want people to believe. Uh, uh, it's not Valentine and police station. Police station, I backed up, gave them the account number, gave them the name of the sister who's in Canada, who's operating this thing, okay. gave them the necessary evidence. I didn't just talk. Okay, we have so, to leave it So there. you can't say, I'm just talking without begging it up. I went to police. Here, Malema's doing something unusual. He's calling out one of South Africa's most powerful politicians. But this isn't a baseless accusation. He insists he's provided evidence to the authorities. Malema doesn't back down. He's daring the system to hold itself accountable. And he's saying to everyone watching, I'm not afraid to call out those in power. This moment is huge because he's willing to stand alone, even if the establishment tries to discredit him. Finally, let's talk about Malema's attitude toward the legal battles he faces. When asked if he's ready to go to court, he's brutally honest about it. Yeah. And for that, you're prepared to, to go to court? We're not going to court. We're being taken to court. We'll defend ourselves. This statement, though short, speaks volumes. Malema isn't afraid of standing trial. He knows he's being targeted, but he refuses to bow. For Malema, court isn't a threat. It's just another place to prove his resilience. He's saying to his supporters, no matter what they throw at us, we'll stand strong. This is why people are drawn to him. He faces every challenge head on, without fear and without compromise. So there you have it. Malema in his truest form. A man who stands firm, who doesn't bend to media narratives, who speaks for the youth, who challenges Western hypocrisy, Democracy, and who refuses to be silenced by institutions. This isn't about politics as usual. Malema's words resonate because he doesn't just speak. He lives his principles. Whether you agree with him or not, there's no denying his intellect, his courage, and his unwavering commitment to his cause. The question now is, what do you think? Do his responses show strength, intelligence, or something else? Let us know in the comments. But one thing's clear. Malema is here to stay, and his words will keep shaking South Africa.